Hey, so this is the second video in my series on my favorite apps that I've discovered where you can improve your musicianship while twiddling your thumbs, whether you're sitting in a drive through waiting in line at the grocery store, or chilling on the couch. First item in my list uh, was fretboard learning tools, which I discussed last video. Uh, these were apps which turn fretboard quizzing into a fun game that you can just pull out of your pocket anywhere and memorize and reinforce your knowledge of the guitar fretboard. Um, in this video, I'm going to discuss the second and third items in my list. So this is going to be basic ear training apps, and then music theory quiz apps, quote unquote, that's what they call themselves. Um, ear training is probably the number one music skill that I would feel comfortable saying you must tackle apart from your instrument if you wanna get good at it. Of course, uh, feeling out songs or transcribing songs, those are powerful skills that you have to do with your instrument. But both of those are things that are gonna be very difficult if you don't have a good foundation already laid of interval recognition and harmony recognition. And that's where some apps are gonna come in. Because back in the day, before the computer age, interval recognition skills would require you to have somebody be in the room on the piano or guitar to quiz you, play an interval, you know, boom, boom, you know, what is that, you know, and then you say, oh, is that a fourth, you know, and they say, no, it's, you're wrong, you know, <laughs> whatever the case is, you know, try, someone there to try to help you figure out and, and be able to identify that. And of course, that requires the person and who wants to be that person, you know, or who wants to ask somebody to do that. So these days, that's where apps come in. An app can do that for you. The Android app that I've been using lately is just called Ear Training. Um, I downloaded a couple of, of those apps to try out. And it seems to me, from what I remember, this is a while back, but from what I remember, they're all very similar. Um, and this is just the one that I happen to end up with. One thing you do want to watch out for as you're looking around on the App Store is make sure you don't get one that's going to charge you for it after you get past the first, you know, uber basic levels. Um, because there's plenty of good ones that are completely free. Most apps will start you off by learning to distinguish between similar basic intervals, such as major second, minor second. And then you gradually build your collection of intervals that you can identify um, until you're able to identify a random interval somewhere between a half step and an octave. Um, the better you get at identifying those intervals, the easier it'll be to learn how to convert melodies you hear into the correct notes to play or the correct notes to write down on paper for later. You could say that this skill is the rock solid foundation for the rest of the skill building process if you intend to be able to play by ear, to be able to write your own music, or to be able to transcribe music from your favorite movie, your favorite video game, that kind of thing. In addition to identifying intervals, every good ear training app will also have some kind of harmony recognition mode. So at the most basic level, you need to recognize the difference between major and minor chords, for sure. Um, once you get beyond that point, the various apps tend to give you various options, a variety of options. The one that I'm currently working on, the, the, the level that I'm, I'm uh, still struggling through, um, is the one where it quizzes you uh, for uh, whether what you hear and your options are, is this major, minor, augmented, dominant seventh, or diminished seventh. And it's those last two that throw me, the dominant seventh and the diminished seventh. I always get them mixed up, have trouble distinguishing them based on what I hear. Um, and then the other one I'm working on, so they've got these two side by side and I'm working on both of them. I'm also working on one where it quizzes you uh, for a major triad, whether you're in root position or whether you're in first inversion. So that would be basically like a C versus a C over E, that kind of thing. Very tricky. I'm getting better at it. Um, my hope is that once I get the hang of it, it'll be this super helpful thing for when I'm doing note for note transcriptions uh, to be able to identify, you know, and then, and then theoretically, I'm, I'm hoping that once I, once I master that, it'll also be easier to identify, for example, second inversion, that kind of thing. Just because you've got a better sense of what, what kind of a, you know, major chord of this type is it. Now, one important thing to remember with skills like ear training is that you can't binge that kind of thing and be successful. So six hours a day of ear training for a week, probably not super helpful, but 15 minutes a day in five minute increments here and there squeezed in, that's gonna get you somewhere if you are able to keep it up over the long haul, which related to that is if you kind of enjoy it and you don't hate it, <laughs> hate it too much, you know. There is one downside of interval recognition of ear training apps like this one. If if uh, we're going by the motto of, uh, 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 what did I call this series? Uh, cool apps to improve your musicianship while twiddling your thumbs, you know? Uh, so this is gonna be one where you're gonna wanna do it somewhere where you can have the sound up. So if you're standing in line at the grocery store and, and you're like me, you may not want your neighbors to be l looking over at you, giving you strange looks, wondering why your phone is going, um, uh, um, uh, 
you know, and they just look over at you and wonder what is wrong with this guy, you know. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, if, if you've, um, and another thing as well is you want to be able to give it your, your full attention, you know, so this isn't something to be doing while you're listening to a podcast or, or something like that. You want to be able to focus, you know, at least for the couple of minutes when you're, when you're focusing on it. But if you're in a context where you can turn up your volume and focus for an odd five minutes here and there, um, I think you'll find that uh, using some of these apps or one of these apps for interval and harmony and recognition training, it's going to make your actual practice, your actual ear training on your instrument much more enjoyable as long as you're able to stick with it over the long haul. List item number three is great for those contexts when you don't want to turn the volume up. Used to be whenever I'd be browsing through the app store and I'd see music theory quiz of some type or other showing up in the app store, kind of my response was, man, you know, I don't have any use for that. But then I finally downloaded one. I realized that what these apps actually are, in some cases at least, is basically a quick recognition quiz for the elements of sight reading. And that's, that's kind of priceless. Um, so I've been using the Android app Music Theory Quiz, that's what its name is, and um, kind of like with the ear training apps, how um, they're all very much the same and they're all pretty good. And same, same with these ones, they're all very similar um, and, and they're all pretty good from what I've seen. So what, what's really the point for these, at least as I see it? Well, for starters, learning key signatures, which is, as I see it, it's a priceless skill whether you read a lot of sheet music or not, because being able to identify your key signatures um, is, is, is one of those priceless things for improvising and for composition or songwriting. Because let's face it, there are a lot of keys, and once you get more than three sharps or three flats, who really has a clue? But those mystery keys with tons of sharps and tons of flats, you know, the, the G sharp, the, the G flat, the, the D flat, the B flat minor, those kinds of things, um, those are actually, you kind of need those if you want to do a lot of moving in and out of keys, or especially if you want to go for any kind of modern film score-esque sound, you know, where, you, where you've got this feel of new and this feel of discovery and adventure that, that really is characterized by lots of key changes and lots of chords that belong outside of the key, that kind of thing. What else we got? Well, next up uh, is learning to better identify those mystery triads uh, in terms of what chord they are. Uh, basically, you know, the, these uh, these note clusters that um, for anyone who reads music, you're going to want to identify them just because it, it helps to be able to categorize them in your head. But for those of us who are better at reading chord charts than we are, or, or lead sheets for that matter, than we are at reading these note clusters, and then that becomes an especially valuable skill. So an app like this lets you especially target and build that skill while you're apart from your instrument, while you're not you're doing, doing sight, reading, sight reading music. Um, and you can do that during the time that you would be spending twiddling your thumbs or, or let's say watching cat videos. So perfect. And then of course there's interval recognition or interval identification um, in the sheet music side of things. Uh, very good for improving your quick visual recognition of sheet music. It also helps uh, to develop your ability to intuitively um, have in your head the shape of the clef in relation to the half step intervals. So what I mean by that is you know, there's, a, there's a half step between B and C, there's a half step between E and F. And so to have that in your head when you look at the clef, you know, it takes some of this uh, practice and repetition of some of these intervals and to be able to recognize, okay, this one is a six, that's not a minor six. Um, and I can recognize that in relation to what accidentals there are. And that kind of reinforces with the, sh the shape of the clef in relation to those half step intervals that, that are abnormal. So that's that, two types of apps that you can use to learn to recognize notes while waiting for your burger in the drive-through, unless you're comfortable waiting in line while your neighbors wonder why your phone is making strange noises. Uh, next up in this series, I'm going to talk about uh, what I think is the most fun and productive chord recognition game I've ever seen in an app. It's called Chord X. And so I'm going to be talking about that next video and then move on to more things like that and more things like this that I think are, are pretty cool ways you can improve your musicianship while twiddling your thumbs.